Hey folks, welcome back to the Sedgwick Jimmy channel. We're certainly glad to see you. And today we're looking at the great cataclysm that hit Port Royal, Jamaica on June 7th, 1692. Port Royal was the most profitable and important port the British had in the New World. And it was pretty much wiped out in one day. How? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. So let's just get into it. <music> Port Royal, like the rest of Jamaica, was controlled by the Spanish from 1509 until it was taken by the British in 1655. Now, the British didn't have the foothold in the New World that they later would, particularly when it came to military might. So the governor of Jamaica, Edward Dooley, so the governor of Jamaica, Edward Dooley, so the governor of Jamaica, Edward Dooley, reached out to the Brethren of the Coast, a loose coalition of pirates, privateers, and buccaneers, if you want to know the difference between those three, there's a video to watch, and offered them a deal, make Port Royal their base of operations. This was a good deal for everyone involved. The Brethren had access to Spanish shipping lanes and coastal cities while they brought back their gains and spent them as fast as they could make them. Port Royal had a bar for every 10 inhabitants. As basically a pirate base, it became what many called the Sodom of the New World, seeing as how much the population consisted of tavern owners, pirates, and prostitutes. With the Spanish having a much smaller shipping footprint due to piracy, fewer ships containing supplies were arriving, creating an issue for people that just wanted everyday goods. This created a system referred to as forced trade, where the merchants would create trade with the Spanish only for the privateers to rob them, the merchants working with the privateers, of course. And as this was going on, you also had land invasions. In 1668, Sir Henry Morgan, yeah, the rum guy, led an attack on Portobello and brought back more than seven times the annual sugar profits, roughly five and a half million modern dollars, which was a ridiculous amount of money. As I've mentioned before, sugar was extremely profitable, but it couldn't hold a candle to piracy. Ironically, they turned away from piracy and became one of the harshest places on pirates. Even more ironically, this was started after Henry Morgan was made lieutenant governor. It's reported that they once executed 41 pirates in a month. So yeah. At about 11.43 a.m. on June 7th, 1692, an earthquake hit the island. We know the exact time due to a broken pocket watch. The main shock was an estimated 7 to 7.3 on the Richter scale, and two-thirds of the city was reported to have slid into the sea. Why? Well, most of Port Royal was built on sand. And when you have an earthquake mixing that sand with the water flooding in, the ground experiences liquefaction. Basically, the ground under the city turned into quicksand. Buildings and people vanished into the earth or were swept away by landslides. As the waters receded, the ground solidified, trapping anyone who had sank into it. An estimated nine-tenths of the city had been destroyed, so it couldn't really get much worse. As I said, the waters receded, and as many of you know, when the water recedes after an earthquake, it means one thing. Tsunami. So, as the people were trying to dig what was left of the city and its inhabitants out of the sand, a massive wave came in. So large that only the rooftops of a few intact structures could be seen above the waterline. At least one ship was seen sailing over the town. And once the waters receded again, then the loading started. The dead were everywhere, and many were stripped of their clothing and all possessions. Fingers were cut off to remove rings. And because of so many dead bodies and a lack of clean water, disease began to ravage the survivors. Half of the city's inhabitants died during the events. Half of what was left died in the aftermath. Most people considered it God punishing the city for its past. Though Port Royal had been considered the unofficial capital and was home to the governing officials, they moved to the actual capital Spanish town, and the merchants moved their shipping to Kingston. In fact, Port Royal became all but abandoned as Kingston grew in size and economic power. 
Today, Port Royal exists as a village outside Kingston Harbor. A shadow of what it once was and a warning to all that no matter what you build up, it can all be washed away in just one day. And that's just going to about do it for our look at Port Royal's really bad day. And if you liked it, give us a like. If you want to see more, give us a subscribe. And if you have anything to add, we'll jump on down to the comments and let us know. Thanks for watching and don't forget to come back here for more Sedgwick Jimmy in the future. Come check it out.